Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're back with another episode. And today I have the pleasure of having um, a new guest. His name is Samuel Sanders. Welcome, Sam. Thank you so much for coming and taking time from your busy life. Oh, I'm I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Claudia. <laughs> Good. I see that you're in Washington, D.C. And right before we started, I mentioned I know Washington in and out. I've been there so many times. But you mentioned you were from Philadelphia. So what brought you to Washington? Yeah, so I came down to Washington, D.C. because right before the pandemic started, I started this company called Herd. Uh, Herd is a software company that helps local governments connect more effectively with citizens. Uh, as a citizen, it's important to want to get your voice heard. And as a local government, it's really hard to effectively keep track of all of the emails and uh, requests the citizens give. So what Herd does is it organizes citizens' requests and sends them to other citizens so they can vote on those requests. So then it'll go to a local government being like, hey, this citizen had this idea. It has 80% support. You know, here are the ideas on how to solve those oh, okay. issues. Okay, okay. So, so I'm, I'm cutting you off. I, I'm cutting you off because no, I don't want to talk about government. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally no, because fine. because ladies and gentlemen, he's a he's a creativity man, and this is why we're we're so happy to be he- have him because um, he has written about and talks about all things creative, and there's so much in Italian. We say there's so much meat on the fire. You know, there's so many mm. things cooking. But um, what I have picked out from all of the wonderful things and topics that that Sam has mentioned to me, I, I will like, I really would like to start with a, um, well, no, I have to do my job. Let me introduce you properly, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so ready to get in with it. I was like, oh, okay. let's do this. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Just let me backtrack a, a second. He's won numerous awards um, for various different things that I will not tell you, but his, uh, he did write a book called The Next Big Idea, Improve Your Creativity and Problem si- Solving. Did I get that right, Sam? Uh, yeah, your next oh, big idea. All right. Um, then there's so many other things, um, but he's also, and what I love is um, he's created an athletic, he's created athletic training cro- uh, clothing for athletes in the 19, in the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. I think that was that that was really interesting. But even more interesting is that you were a game designer, a board game designer for a game called Paint the Roses. And I love that. I love that. And plus, you know, people always put a little bit about their private lives. And, and he wrote, he's passionate about roller coasters and coffee. And I thought, Oh, I love him. <laughs> and we'll <laughs> happily t- talk about either of them. We'll see if we can get to the roller coasters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Thank well, you where do we that. start? Where do we start? So, so let's talk about creativity because I'm putting this in the series on creativity. Okay. Um, it's, you know, when you talk about creativity, well, how does it start? Now, you have a series of uh, things to say, but it would be interesting to start with the spark. You know, where does that come from? Um, and what happens along the way? Is it all, you know, rosy glasses uh, type thing? Or are there pitfalls that occur? And what happens with that? How do you come back and spring back? And um, there are challenges, but let's start with the creative process and then we'll see where we get. Yeah. First thing I do want to touch on is that for the uh, board game uh, design thing, I designed a, like a promo or variation uh-huh. of like the board game. The head bo- uh, board game designer, Paint the Roses, is Ben Goldman. He's also a super creative guy, uh, awesome to work with. So I uh, just wanted to clarify that, you know, okay. give him credit where credit's due. Give him due. due credit, right. Yeah. Um, so He's honest, let's... ladies and gentlemen. He's honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Real clean cut here. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, so let's 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 talk about creativity and you know in your next big idea I I touch a lot on the creative process in your book and, and you yeah in my book mm-hmm. your next big idea um, and the whole concept behind the book is uh, showing people how these entrepreneurs these creatives these innovators come up with their big ideas that are successful the first step I tell people is to start looking for problems needs and wants and so. It's kind of counterintuitive problems, because we don't really like the needs and wants. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And it's kind of counterintuitive because we don't really like to think about like the negative aspects of life. Mm -hmm. But when you go and try and drill into those problems, they're really potential opportunities to like come up with a solution to fix it. So if you're facing a problem and you find out that a lot of people are facing the same problem, that's mm -hmm. all of a sudden when you realize like, hey, if I, I can identify this, I can try and fix it, that then there might be something there. There's an opportunity. And so uh, I really looking at those problems that people have, like can needs that people have. Can we have an example have, here? Yeah, for sure. So. Okay. Let's take something uh, really famous, like an umbrella. Oh, the first person who came the, up with an umbrella, yeah. like they were outside and they did not want to be wet. They it was not comfortable. It <laughs> I was get not, that. you know, yeah. And so what happened is they were like, well, okay, you know, what if we create a like something to hold so that you don't get wet? Right. Another really good example of like that a lot of people know a rolling suitcase. So it used to be that we had to like carry suitcases through the airport. It was heavy and it was not easy. And so somebody was like, it would be way easier if I didn't have to go through this problem. I didn't have to like be annoyed by the lugging of this mm -hmm. luggage around. It should have wheels. And so then the rolling suitcase being uh, came in increasingly uh, mm -hmm. pop popular. Um, and when I, when I tell people to look for problems, I try and like share specific words that almost like are, okay. are like key points. Okay. If someone says like, I hate something or I wish something would happen. You know, that's them indicating that there's something there that could potentially be solved. Now, so wait, a, wait going, a minute, wait a minute. Now, there's yeah. a lot of people listening and watching, watching. I'll be putting this on my YouTube channel and a lot of uh, people, I'll give you, you know, I'm, an absurd, but but it, this is the case. There, there aren't only business-minded people. All right, so... Mm -hmm. There's a problem, and uh, a, a woman, a young woman, thinking her, her problem is: I really do need. I want to find a companion, and I guess mm -hmm. the need prompted dating apps. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think it. It's more like it's it. Yeah, it's hard to meet people. You know, mm -hmm. that's something that a lot of people face, and so giving or I. I, in a in a want way, like I want to be able to try and meet more people right. more more effectively, and so that is something that um, you know led to led to dating right. apps, uh, and it even leads to like everyday solutions, like you know friends still set each other up. They right, uh, like right. it's it's it doesn't have to be the next big business. It mm -hmm. can just be everyday solutions just right. for yourself. You know, maybe you want you're a mom and you want to like make your life easier around the house. You know, there are little things you could potentially do, you know, noticing things that are slowing you down, try and come up with creative solutions, whether it's exciting your kids about getting dressed in the morning, you know, maybe it's something that it feels mm -hmm. like that's really exhausting, but you know, you make it a game and all of a sudden mm -hmm. they're very excited about it. Just like all of these little creative aspects you can do. So there's the business element of it, but there's mm -hmm. also just the everyday foundation of it too. Well, what about, let, let's ask you, you know, Samuel Sanders, what was the last time that you offered a creative solution, one, for your private life, and two, as a business venture? Do you have those stories, or am I asking too much? No, we can, okay. we can touch on that. Right. Um, so, I think for myself, uh, as, as the business venture, it mm -hmm. really is more about like herd and the stuff that I talked about earlier, where mm -hmm. it's governments and people have a disconnect where they feel like right. they want to be heard and governments want to hear people, but it's hard to keep track of all right. of that organization. Um, for myself, I would say like, this is gonna, this is gonna be like a little personal embarrassing, but recently <laughs> like I, the, the, no, it's, it, 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 I guess it's a, only a little bit embarrassing, but all right. Recently, um, you know, like I was constantly running my dishwasher and I just created way too many dishes, but I found that if I like stack them in a, in a different way, I could yeah. save water, which is great, but also run the dishwasher less often, which is something that's also uh, great. So it's even like the little things like, okay, let me just like, instead of just being annoyed at how often I run the dishwasher, let me just look at this and be like, oh wait, if I stack this differently, would I be able to do it better? Mm. All right. So let's say... Uh, 
we're talking about authors or we're talking about people who have never written a book, but they know that they have it in them. You know, they have this desire, they have this passion to put pen to paper, the whole thing. I'm not going to talk about their gifts of, as writers or anything like that, but they want to offer their ideas on paper to someone else. Is there the same process for them to use to see what is missing on the market for a certain target uh, client or target readership in this case? Do the same steps yeah. pertain to that? Yeah, uh, I think it does. You know, the thing about the book market is there are so many books out there right now. And so mm -hmm. a little bit of a Google search will help you find, you know, things that people are looking for. But there are, there are other ways to go about this need. A lot of like looking at what Amazon autofills can show like what wait, people wait, are looking for. Wait, wait, say that again. For. Amazon autofills. What is that? Yeah. Is that one word? Autofills? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when you, if let, say you're writing about creativity, like I right. am, okay. if I go into the Amazon or I go into Google and mm -hmm. I type like creativity, right. A lot of times I'm looking at what is being filled afterwards. So what is Google ah, saying okay. like, hey, this is what people are searching? Or what is Amazon saying like, hey, this is what people are searching? Okay, so those um, are the key word with added to the right or to the left um, segments, right. right? Yeah, yeah. And so you can use that to find out uh, mm -hmm. what people are looking for. Good. You know, there's, um, yeah. There's, and there are a lot of like, once you dive into different categories on Amazon, you can see what's being written about, what is popular, yeah. uh, what it maybe isn't being touched on. I would say that's when you're writing, it's, it's good to hit a popular subject in a new way. It doesn't necessarily need to be something that's completely new mm -hmm. it's just because popular subjects have the readership. What about um, an example You just have here. to give your own spin. Yeah. So let's say you're writing uh we'll go fiction this time so let's okay, say fiction. you're writing like yeah let's say you're writing um you know a romance novel um i'll i don't know let's just say like a futuristic romance novel okay. so a romance novel that takes place in science the year fiction. 3000 mm -hmm. yeah science fiction romance novel um it's good to look and see what's available what's been written about but Maybe it's a matter of, oh, you know, science fiction romance novels, they're out there, but I don't really see any that represent the LGBTQ community, or oh, I don't okay. really see any that like um, t tackle maybe space or maybe, mm -hmm. you know, oh, like tackle political right. society. So, you know, like there are a lot of like different angles you can look at there. Okay. So l l I'm going to take you from one sector to the other, trying it out. All right. Trying your form. Yeah. Out. All right. So. We have a young couple who's just moved into the heart of Pennsylvania uh, from mm -hmm. somewhere else, from a city, mm -hmm. okay? So they get into the heart of Pennsylvania and the, the male component of the uh, couple, this is a male-female couple, he is a mechanic, has always been a mechanic, and he's, he's worked with varying sizes of cars, okay? And mm -hmm. some small machinery. Could this formula that you use uh, creatively be uh, put to use for his business? Can he search for a niche in this sense? I mean, or does he need mm -hmm. to specialize in foreign uh, foreign automobiles because there is there are mm -hmm. none in in Pennsylvania, you know, or something like that? How would that work i mean could the creative element be in the work and in the marketing as well or mm -hmm. what would you suggest so for this mechanic yeah the um the <laughs> most important thing is really identifying his market well so if you're in the middle of pennsylvania you're going to have a very different market than if you're sitting you know in philadelphia or pittsburgh it's just a very different clientele and they're looking for different different types of things right Mm -hmm. I don't know these statistics off the top of my head, but my guess is there are probably slightly more trucks in the middle of Pennsylvania right. than there are, mm -hmm. you know, outside in, in the cities, um, just because driving a truck in a city is sure. kind of a pain if you're sure. at the park and all that <laughs> <Sure>. stuff. Um, <laughs> but taking a look at, at, at who those customers are and what problems they're facing. So, you know, if it's a matter of like what they're looking for and, and 
and what um, what kind of changes they're trying to make to their car. Maybe it's noticing something like, hey, this kind of upgrade would be really good for this community. You know, maybe like extra, mm -hmm. uh, if you can create some kind of extra storage if they're doing a lot of carrying of like goods or if you can, um, you know, do decals that are something that they really like. You know, looking at what, these people want and where what problems they're facing that's really where the creative aspect comes mm -hmm. into it so even like something like a mechanic which um you know there are there are things that you just do as a mechanic where it's right. like this is the solution to this problem you still have that opportunity if you listen and you like look at what people are looking for uh to be creative in that space yeah. so so um this gets me to a question that you have uh, suggested uh, that you might be able to illuminate us on how to break the rules and challenge mm -hmm. the status quo in a positive mm -hmm. way. And this makes me think of your herd uh, project. Mm -hmm. Can you give us other ideas in its more general sense? And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, get going down into the uh, more detailed sense. Yeah. So when I talk about the status quo, I talk about being built from stigmas. So stigmas are rules and guidelines that we follow, even though we don't necessarily feel like- Okay, give us a stigma just so everyone knows that we're to talking follow. about. Yeah, so I'll, I'll name a couple of different, there are different types of them. So one is habits. You know, if you're running with the same habit over and over again, you are just, it's easier to go that way. If I walk the same way to work every day for 10 years, there may be a path that's faster that opened up since then, but because I am just in that habit, I'm probably not going to notice that there's social influence as well. Like you see influencers or big companies do things in certain ways. And you're like, Oh, that must be the best way for me. Even though it might not be because you're an individual, you're maybe a smaller company. It may okay. not match your needs. So there are these stigmas. And if you can find a stigma and break it. So, Okay, so um, you know, so you're using say. this word stigma is something that is um, a patterned uh, belief that needs to be broken. Let's call it that. Yeah, uh, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, as someone that's looking to like try and be creative, you can look at a lot of those uh, patterns um, or ways that society is viewed, and ask yourself if you can break it in a way that would make it more efficient. Uh, or make you more efficient or make the situation just better overall, provide more happiness if it's an individual type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the part of the thing about having these habits is yeah. they they help you, you know, live your everyday life. Like I don't want to have to think about like what foot I put in through my pants in the morning every time I get dressed. Like I just want to go with a habit and just have my thing. Um, but if it's a matter of like something that you could potentially challenge in a really positive way, um, like the suitcase example that we talked about earlier, where it's just like, this is how luggage was made for years. Nobody, I mean, the wheel has been around even longer than luggage. So uh, mm -hmm. nobody really yep. thought to put it together. So if you can challenge those in a way that's, that's really positive, As you that's were something that- talking you know, and you were talking about pants, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm thinking of the Scottish quilt. <laughs> there must have been some, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, they had to go yeah. to battle and had there to, you, you know. <laughs> Um, there you go. Love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there's another thing that um, that I wanted to ask you about: how challenging preconceived notions and these, I guess, are equivalent to your your stigmas during the idea development can take an idea from ground to brown, ground breaking. Um, yeah, I think we would need a, a couple of examples here. Yeah. So. I think like how this would work. So let's let's take another. Um, let's go back to my dishwasher problem earlier. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. You know, that's I can see new, you doing it. <laughs> Loading no, the dishwasher, yeah, so, all different straight. I can see you. Imagine yeah. You have to do that. So there's the solution that I came up with. Right. And it's a matter of like, okay, if I stack these in a different way or I line them up in a different way, you know, that's that's. Um, something that could be real, you know, like more efficient mm -hmm. in my space, save water, you know, don't have to do dishes as often, I guess. Right. But what I could look at is like, okay, how are dishwashers set up in the first place? Why do they set it up with like the spokes in a certain way? Is there a reason that they do it this way? 
is that necessarily the best way to do it? Is there a better way to try and go about doing it or better way to build the dishwasher? When you're going and you're trying to like create ideas and not everything, you know, um, necessarily requires this. If it's just like a daily life thing, like at this point, like I, you know, I'm not, I, I like dishwashers, but I'm not passionate enough to go redesign the entire dishwasher. Mm -hmm. But if there's something that you're into and you're passionate about, it's important to take those questions of challenging the status quo. You know, almost all dishwashers are set up the same way. Is that the best way? Can you design it a little bit differently? Can you design the dishwasher to use less water? You know, there are lots of really just like foundational questions that you need to be able to ask. I mean, think about it. And that's like, if you can solve it and be like, oh, you know, we could stack the dishes better this way, line the dishes up better this way and use less water this way. Then that's when you're taking your idea of just instead of redesigning how you line up your dishes, you're taking it to a ground baking idea where it's like now you're rethinking the dishwasher. You're engineering a new dishwasher. Yeah. yeah. There you go. (laughs) I'd like to um, ask you one last question here. And and it's fundamental, really, how to fight creative block at all different Mm -hmm. levels. Yeah. So there in the book, Your Next Big Idea, I talk about a a couple different ways to fight creative block. Um, One of the, you know, and I'll name a couple here. One of the ones that I think is really effective is putting yourself through change. You know, we run the same, as I talked about, routines pretty much every day or every week. And so putting yourself in a new situation, your brain's going to light up because you need to be able to like analyze the new situation, decide what you're going to do. Um, and you know, make new decisions, you're going to be more detail oriented, because you're not used to the situation. And, you know, this could just be a change in work pattern, it Mm -hmm. could be even going on like walks to new areas. Like, I sometimes I'll pick a neighborhood in DC and like, just go explore, go walk and, you know, uh, you know, see something new. It's sort of like another one challenging yourself. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, definitely. And you know, challenging yourself is something that is important in that like creative process in general. But um, another one that I talk about is let yourself be bored. Like in today's society, we don't really get bored anymore. We are on our phones whenever we have a spare moment, we'll turn on Netflix, you know, whatever it is, we don't just sit. And when you're bored, and you have nothing, your mind just sort of wanders. And there's this kind of advantage where it's kind of like free and creative. And it can be, you know, boring as as being bored is but what ends up happening is like as your mind wanders begins to entertain itself you'll be able to like come up with more ideas and so we don't really let ourselves be bored often enough um and i feel like that's a really good way to to fight creative block as um, as well would you mind sharing a, a session of yours personally that one of the last boredom sessions that helped mm-hmm. you in some way get to some yeah. creative element. Yeah, I mean, the, recently I was um, producing an article and I just, I got stuck <laughs> as writers do sometimes where you're what just was the like, article I about? do. What was the article about? Do not know. Oh, the article was about uh, building uh, like a, divi- a diverse team. Um, and just like trying to figure out how to effectively weave everything together in a way that it was just a really compelling, uh, you know, story, like and, and building a, div- a diverse a team. team for creativity. Um, and I, I was just trying to figure out how to weave it together in a way that was like a compelling story. And I just felt a little stuck. Um, I, I left it for then. And, you know, like later that um, evening, I was just kind of like sitting, scrolling through my phone, went to my own like head and was like, I really should just let myself, you know, wander mm-hmm. a little bit more often. Just kind of started thinking about the article, I took a walk and like thought about it. And, you know, as I'm just like sitting, I, all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, you know, if I if I rearrange the article and organize it in a way that is just like chunks, like here's reason one, here's reason two, here's reason three, you know, that'll be a really compelling and fast way to read it so that the reader can get all the information quickly. So it's, um, that's, that's probably the most recent one I had, but there, you know, lots of examples of just like where I let my mind wander. And maybe I think of like a new, a new right. story that I think would or be entertaining. Or you see or some color like somewhere or, or a yeah. kid playing on a swing and it gives you the idea of swinging from one thing to another will bring the, 
you know, end of the article, put it in the front, you know, front that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah change everything. <laughs> I love that. Turn it on its head. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Interesting. I, you know, why, while you were talking, I don't know why I'm asking you this. Please forgive me. Have you ever had your cards read? A tarot card reading? Oh, no, I've never had a tarot <laughs> card reading. Is, it, is this something that I should go, go? No, find? no, 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 no. Because, I, you know, I'm thinking of my YouTube audience who, you know, effectively many do have readings of different nature, you know. And I'm thinking, um, I, I personally know obviously many people who start laughing if i ask them that questions just like you have you know and then they'll start worrying and thinking like you said why do you think i need one (laughs) 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 what do you know that i don't know (laughs) yeah it was just it just came to me out of the blue and i was wondering um this maybe i'm supposed to tell you this as a suggestion anyway uh, the idea is um there are many ways to get card readings. I'm sure in Washington, D.C., they do have um, uh, tarot readers that have their little shops. Uh, uh, they're, they're disappearing, really. But if you ever come across one of these and you see someone who, who doesn't look too seedy or who gives you the impression of being an honest type person, go to them and sit down and have them, you know, look at at what they see. And that could be also another way to get some creative ideas. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to tell you. Well, you now you have it. <laughs> Another way to be creative. Well, Get your tarot I- cards. <laughs> Actually, no. This is an interesting... Um, recently, I um, th- there was a research group in Milan, one of the universities, I can't remember. I think it must have been the University of Milan, who were working on different things. They got together and they created a new tarot deck and it's for creative purposes. And it's called Intuity, Intuity. And um, that that is with an I um, in the end. And that is interesting because you're talking about creativity. Maybe that's the link that I'm, um, that I'm going towards because what happens typically when people listen to me or, you know, do them on their own. They'll buy a tarot deck or get a tarot deck, get somebody to give them a tarot deck. And they'll throw about throw around ideas. For example, uh, you know, give me some advice on how I should structure this article, right? And mm-hmm. you, you know, shuffle the cards and you look at them and they may give you clues. And so this is, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I must be prompted to tell you this. It's another way. So that <laughs> creative deck called Intuity of this, it's very odd. It's not like any other tarot deck, but it's made for creativity to be able to let you see the creative element and the messages that you're supposed to be getting. Interesting. So you should try. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, there, there are two things that I would definitely say uh, to that. I think a lot of people um, look at these. So I come from like a very like math brain background. So I, that, that's probably part of the reason that I've never gone like tarot reading. But at the same time as someone who's like studied creativity, giving yourself new experiences mm-hmm. and putting yeah. yourself out there to try yeah. things that are really different right. is so critically so important. important. So yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll you go need to go. It, you know, the, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Um, and then the the matter with the um, the the deck, the, the deck intuitive. Deck, sometimes, sometimes the the first step of a block uh, is just a baby step in the sense where yes. it's like, okay, now we have like this kind of thinking about this problem. That's going to force me to think about it in a different way. Almost like it's a there's a wall when you have a creative right, block, and right, you just right, like kind of right. walked around the wall because now you're looking at it a different perspective. It might get your brain rolling, and so. Um, I could see how like a deck like that could be really helpful yeah, for um, yeah. a lot of people. Well, Samuel Sanders, tell my uh, listeners and viewers where they can find you. Yeah. So um, you can go to yournextbigidea.com. Um, there's some extra content there if you're interested uh, in Your Next Big Idea, the book, and where I talk about uh, problem solving and creativity. Um, you can go to Goodreads. You can follow me along there as an author. Um, and then on the website itself, your next big idea book.com, you'll be able to go and find Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff. So Great. yeah, feel free to follow along. <laughs> Good. I'll write it in the description underneath the video and underneath the episode. Thank you so much for this lively conversation. I really appreciated it. Thanks. Oh yeah. Thank you so much for having me.
All right. <laughs> it's my pleasure, really. Bye-bye, Sam. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.